What's going on, babe? Hey, babe. How was your day? It was actually pretty productive. Happy to be home. Good. You know, we got a game today. Mm-hmm. Honey, a little rough around the edges. I mean, I'm saying I've been working all night, taking care of business, getting to the... You know what? I don't even want to talk about it. I got you. I'm not trying to be out here looking like a dusty dusty, and that's why I'm excited to have T. Chanley as a sponsor of today's video. They helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system, which come with all of the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells, and a moisturizer with SPF 20, because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. In addition to amazing skin, members of Teach Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price and the ability to customize your box. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description. You'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Click the link and get started today. We're taking care of ourselves. Self-care, fellas, is the first step to be able to get to that bag, to take care of business, and be on top of things and level up in every aspect of your life. Feel the tease, my friends. Good morning. How is everyone doing? I missed y'all yesterday. Did y'all miss me? Don't lie. Anton, did you miss me yesterday? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I don't believe you. Well, why would you believe me? Fix your uh, collar. So how's it going, guys? It's Friday. Any exciting plans for the weekend? Oh, it's Super Bowl Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you're a sports better, who cares? I don't think I'm going to bet some money on the Super Bowl this year. I'm not. I'm you're not really into football game. like that, though, either. No, why do I give an F about football? Is it money for me in football somewhere? I mean, I guess if you bet on the game, you would get some money, right? I don't know. This is I'm shining on these streets. There we go. That's a little bit better. Is there some money in football for me or something? It looks dark. Maybe it's Looks not. regular to me. There you go. Thank you. If it ain't no money in it, then I don't really want to talk about it on the low. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. This is the Millionaire Morning Show. That went a little dark. Let me light that up. This is the Millionaire Morning Show. I'm your host, Anton from AntonDaniels.com uh, with my co-host, Rita. And life is absolutely awesome. So, someone was MIA yesterday. <laughs> Care to tell us if you got a side man somewhere? Um, I was actually taking care of business involving, I had to go to our daughter's school yesterday. Oh, that's what you say. And then I had to also go to Secretary of State. That's what she says. And then. That's what she says. That's what, what they all do? say. <laughs> you know what I read yesterday? What? So remember that school shooting that was uh, here in Michigan, the big one that went big or whatever? Yes. Uh, her co-worker was testifying against her. And her Ooh. co-worker, the lady, the, the parent. Really? Yeah, her co-worker was testifying against her, and her co-worker said that she had a side dude. Oh. That they was having an affair. What did that have to do with the shooting, though? Well, why did that come out? Why did that come out in hearing? I don't I'm know. Just I just wondering. I read it on the thing yesterday, and I thought that that was interesting. And so, mm, she had a side dude, apparently. They were having extramarital affairs, and they were they had just fix their relationship and reconcile things so i don't know i thought that'd be an interesting detail just in general like 
why would that be a thing? Why is that? Why was that relevant? But right, that's what I'm trying to figure it out. Relevant, so it is what it is. We rocking with it. Mm, that's interesting. Did you enjoy your day off yesterday? <laughs> oh, look, she's smiling. Look, hold on, let me get that. She smiled. Um, I mean, did you enjoy your day off yesterday? Uh-huh. Yes and no uh-huh. because I missed you guys. I wanted uh-huh. to be here. I was here in spirit. I was watching in the car and mm. in Secretary of State. Mm. You was typing online so that you can make sure that I wouldn't catch you. <laughs> you was typing online to make sure I wouldn't catch you. Would catch you. me? Listen, honey, no one compares to you. Oh, that's what they tell us. That's what they tell us. No one compares. My boy uh, Aaron says, uh, AL says, speaking on affordable housing in Boston, they go by average median income percentage. The highest percent percentage I've seen used was 120%, which is $101,000 a year for one person. Hold on one second. And 145K for a family of four. Even some engineers and doctors use affordable housing. I don't know any engineers and doctors that use affordable housing, but I see that Aaron is really, really set on this. Mm. He's, this is the conversation that we was having yesterday, and Aaron is really, really set on this, Aaron. So shout out to Aaron for the super chats. It is Friday. No bag fumbling Friday, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get to the bag. We had the Lapeef Let's Talk show yesterday. Um, that was popping. Before we get started today, let me go ahead and do some housekeeping. Uh, shout out to the bag chasers. I just posted an update in the Patreon about... Um, the Atlanta meetup. If you are trying to leak up in Atlanta, it is exclusive for Patreon members. So every single month, for those of you that are not familiar, every single month I go to a different city and I do a meetup with my tribe members, which are my Patreon members. The link is in the description as well as pinned at the top of the chat. I do a link up and it goes absolutely awesome and swimmingly so every single meetup is better than the one before this one is going to be towards the end of february it's going to be on a saturday and it's going to be awesome so we're going to be in atlanta last month we were in los angeles the month before that we were in houston and the month before that we were in miami so dang meetup in atlanta it's gonna be popping i just posted it and I've already got a whole lot of people that said that, yo, we showing up. So I have to do some reconnaissance, find a good location, and get it popping. But in addition to that, don't just join the Patreon to link up and for the meetups and all of that, right? Because they are. Listen, our meetups be lit. Anybody that's been to one know my meetups be all of that, right? Don't just join the Patreon for the meetup. Make sure you join the Patreon and you're doing the work to go along with it. I put a lot of effort into making sure that I allocate time to give you guys the best and the most exclusive information. And I don't want that to go to waste. I don't want you to have an opportunity to do great things and then you just let it go by the wayside because you're not intentional and you was only trying to go to the meetup. I want you to join it and work your way through the videos. We're slowly update. Well, all of the updates is in the Patreon. So we put the updates to the Discord, the update to the Facebook group. We put all of that there. Um, I gave y'all insight on what it is that I'm working on as far as the new applications, the uh, new website, lots going on. It's a lot going on. In 2022, we are absolutely upgrading and taking over everything. So shout out to the bag chasers. No fumble Friday. Some of y'all got paid today. That is absolutely awesome. I didn't get paid today. This is the off week for me. I did drop my W-2 on the Patreon, so if you want to see that, you can also. But shout out to the bag chasers and the moderators and everybody, right? So I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. If you want to book me for a personal session, make sure that you go to my website, antondaniels.com, and email me from there, and we are going to get you set up. Some people are booked through the whole year because they know that the price of the brick is going to be going up very soon. Mark my words, the price of the brick goes up. So again, shout out to everybody that's booked a personal session. Shout out to my Patreon members. I love you guys. I appreciate you. We're absolutely doing the work, all right? In addition to that, shout out to Teach Henley, uh, sponsor of the show. And in addition to that, my boy Nick Virgil. Nicholas Virgil, uh, super duper dope. Had some great conversations with him on the phone. Shout out to Nicholas Virgil, uh, one of the sponsors of this live stream. In addition to Teach Henley, 30% off your first order and get a free gift. And then last but not least, shout out to the other sponsor of this live stream, Secret. Secret, ladies and gentlemen, you can get it in chocolate, you can get it in vanilla, 
I love it. I drink it personally. I would never endorse something that I do not embrace. And it's dope. So those links are in the description for everything. Um, and I appreciate you. I definitely wanted to get the housekeeping out of the way. And Rita, uh, so what are your thoughts um, after being away from the show for a day? Just in a general sense, like... I missed you guys. Did you miss it, seriously? Yeah, I did. Because, I mean, like, I, f I feel like it's a part of me now. Like, I'm so used to being here and doing it every day. I was actually trying to make it back on time yesterday. And it just it just wasn't happening. Secretary of State. You had a was... glow today. You sure you ain't uh, out here for the playground, ma'am? No. You got a little bit of glow on you. What was really? that for? You came you came home a little bit a little bit more um spicy. I had to tame that cat. <laughs> I had to tame that cat yesterday. <laughs> I said, let me go ahead and put you. You know what's so funny? Maybe it's your fault, the theme of how the shows go. What and the reason mean? I say that, ladies and gentlemen, is because, you know, often at time, however, however Rita acts or however our day goes or the relationship goes, a lot of times what happens is that's often the theme of the show the next day. Taming that cat. <laughs> so we're talking about <laughs> uh, relationships true. today. Shout out that's to not Sir, true. <laughs> shout out to Shirt Shy. It says Anton and Rita, birthday month for Rita and Leslie. Quick hits, great show on the beef. <laughs> uh, Bagley traded to the Pistons, go LA Rams and Chasers. Oh, we going to get to a little bit of everything. I got a full show for y'all today. Um, Sir Shai also says, just opened up a Fidelity and Cash App for stocks. Uh, don't do Cash App for stocks. Do the, do the Fidelity, open up a brokerage account. Stay away from margin. All of that is in the Patreon. So, again, we get into the bag. We're going to get to this money. Um, any additional thoughts before we start to get into the show, Rita? Mm -hmm. um, it was brought to my attention that you may have used some curse words yesterday. That's not true. That, that, that I wasn't here. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I'm just going to say it to you right now. That's not true. So are you saying that our people are is lying? Who is our people? Our back chasers. I don't remember anybody telling you anything. Just because you didn't see it don't mean that I wasn't. I don't told believe that, that anybody's seen anything or sold you anything. So did you say any curse words yesterday? Was you supposed yesterday? to be focused on? Was you supposed to be focused on what it is that you was supposed to be doing? <laughs> you were supposed to be out taking care of business while I was out here uh -huh. cooking. Right. I was working hard. I was sweating. I was tired. Why was and, you sweating and tired? And you were supposed to be taking care of business. Okay. And you out here talking about. <laughs> so what is it? Why you talking so fast? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chanel. All right. She didn't hear anything. Fake okay. news. Hold me down. Nah, he was good, Rita. All right, I'm just check, just making sure. Who up in here snitching? I'm not telling. Who's snitching? I'm not telling. Trying to get names up in this B. So, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get into the show. Uh, anything else you want to add to this conversation before we? Nope. Start to, no, go ahead. Say what you say. I say don't. Wanna, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> say it with your chest. Say I don't have anything else. Today. So you know what? Let me see if there's any drops today on sneakers. I just want to see. I'm not even copying nothing. I just want to see if there's any drops today on sneakers today. Oh, we. Oh, you said we're doing that on Saturday. Doing what? Yeah, we're gonna the showcase box. all of y'all stuff that y'all sent us. The hoodies. The Y'all be sending us stuff, so I'm definitely going to showcase a lot of the things that y'all sent us. We're going to do all of that unboxing and everything tomato, tomato. So there's no fumble. Oh, these are sold out. I knew these was going to get sold out. I forgot about these. I don't care about the uh, Jordan 5 girls. These mugs are sold out. Anyway. Somebody right, said so your mic is off. My mic is off? No, my mic is on. It might be turned down. Let me turn that up. might be turned down a little bit. But my mic is definitely my mic is definitely on. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the show, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, you know we got to go ahead and talk about the money. Inflation goes up again. Let me tell you guys what is going to happen. Let me tell you guys what's going to happen. So what's going to happen is that inflation continues to go up. And it's one of the reasons why the markets are in turmoil right now. It's one of the reasons why the market is in turmoil. Inflation is going to continue to go up. The markets are in turmoil because money has been cheap for so long. And so the feds, in order to fight inflation, in order to fight 
um, the prices for housing and a low inventory and everything. The reason why Joe Biden don't want to talk about it is because right now, you know, he's trying to look as good as possible with all of this legislation that he's passing through. He's trying to get this black lady and the Supreme Court and um, he wants to continue to create jobs. But the problem is that the price of goods and services continue to go up and it's at a 40 year high, higher than it's ever been since 1982. Dang. 1982. Meaning, and again, I'm going to beat this beat, beat this into you guys because if you are not beating at least 7.5%, and for some of y'all it's significantly higher, we're going to go into it. If you're not beating at least 7.5%, meaning I don't care what kind of checking or high yield savings account, whatever terms that they put on there, you are going to get destroyed all the way across the board. Okay? So higher than it's ever been in over 40 years, 7.5%. That is insane. So they're going to eventually raise rates. The Fed is going to raise rates, which means that everybody is running out trying to buy and get all of this cheap money as they can, right? In addition to that, it's going to cost more for everything, housing, all of that. The stock markets are going to continue to be in turmoil. They're going to be ups and downs and topsy-turvies and everything like that. So shout out to Uncle Joe. Shout out to Uncle Joe. Shout out to the people that think that they know no business, but they really don't. Let me go ahead and share with you what's going on. So consumer prices surged more than expected over the past 12 months, indicating a worsening outlook for inflation and cementing the likelihood of substantial interest rate hikes this year. Consumer price index for January measures the cost of dozens of everyday consumer goods, rose 7.5% compared to a year ago. Um, it's insane. The highest since February of 1982. All right. So here's the key, though. Here's the key. Let me scroll up a little bit and get the title of this. Um, here, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's let's spin it. Let's do it like this. The average household is spending an extra two hundred and fifty dollars a month. This is to break it down for the people, because for the C students like me, this is something better that we can lean into. Mm -hmm. The average household is spending an extra $250 a month or $3,000 a year uh, due to high inflation, but middle-aged Americans are paying even more. Let mm -hmm. me say that again for you guys. The average household is spending $250 a month or $3,000 $3, a year due to high inflation, but middle-aged Americans are paying even more. I'm trying to break down to you guys the importance of paying attention to inflation. You don't want to pay attention to it because you think that just because you get into the money and all of this other type of stuff, the cost of goods and services are going up higher and higher every single day. Rita, do you have any thoughts on this so far before we dive into it? Yeah, um, I was in the store the other day and I wanted to get a pack of um, chicken wings and it used to be like pull your mic up a little bit. Um, nine dollars for like the bigger pack. Like it was nine dollars for a pack it, of chicken it, wings. It, well, it used to be. Right now, it's eighteen dollars. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. <laughs> it's eighteen dollars. Hundred percent inflation for a pack of chicken wings. Eighteen dollars versus nine dollars. Eighteen for the same pack. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yep. Very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue because. We don't want to let Joe off the hook. We want him, and we got him in this office to do the things that we needed him to do, and we're going to see if he's doing it, all right? So um, inflation is running hot. Everyone is not. Everyone is feeling the burn. Um, we know that it's at a 40-year high, as indicated right here. Cost of everything from rent to dairy to used cars rose in January. Mm -mm -mm. Do you know that... So I paid retail because I got good connections for my Porsche, right? Mm -hmm. You know that people are paying up to 50000 and more over sticker to get these cars? That's crazy. My guy told me, I got a guy, you know who we, uh, one of our friends that be at the game that own the, you know, you yeah, know who it is. I, I don't want to say his about. name. He got a G-Wagon. But he had already got it right before everything just started exploding. 
Do you know that they paying up to one hundred and one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to buy G wagons over the retail price? That's crazy. he sold it just to make the bag. This is not tripping. But I, like, I remember because what was that car that the, we was the S-Class. looking we was at? And they about, said it was gonna be we was like thinking extra. about getting the S class, and they told us that we was probably gonna pay somewhere between twenty to fifty thousand dollars over retail, and we had to get on a waiting list. That is ridiculous. Yep. We was looking at the new S class. So, um, anyways, uh, so just how much has all this inflation cost Americans? Um, Seven percent inflation. With the average rate of inflation in 2018 and 19, which was around 2.1%, shout out to Orange Man, my man Trump. <laughs> uh, based on that comparison, the household, the average household is spending an additional $250 a month or $3,000 a year because of rising inflation. Check this out. The impact differs based on age. So depending on how old you are and what your lifestyle is, it's going to be even more. Mm. So check it out. Between the ages of 45 and 54, the largest brunt of high inflation, seeing their expenses rise about $305 a month, um, which is roughly $3,600 a year. On a monthly basis, comparatively, Americans who are 65 years and older are only spending $194 a month, and that's because they're not really buying a whole lot of stuff in general. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, a silver lining is households uh, is the rate of consumer price index growth may, be start, may start to slow a bit. So basically, they're going to raise rates. Um, there has been some signs that stress in the U.S. supply chains is easing and if sustained will be a significant source of disinflation uh, for core inflation this year. However, he cautioned that as workers demand higher wages to account for the rising cost of living, business will pass those expenses on to consumers in the form of higher prices, perpetuating the inflationary cycle. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what that means. Let me break that down for the people. What that means is when you go, and let's just use the past yesteryear talking points. Mm -hmm. When they go and they advocate and they say, I want $15 an hour. Or I want more, or blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. They don't really make more money because ultimately what happens is the price is rises and they pass that on to consumers. So when you think you're making more money, actually what's really happening is, and this is the real cost of inflation, what's really happening is your prices is rising and the cost for you to be able to pay rent, buy groceries, you paying $18 instead of $9 for a pack of chicken. Mm -hmm. We're not affected because we don't give a F, right? And we know how to uh, lower our cost of living and only write off things from a business perspective. But ultimately what happens is it costs you even more to live. Those prices and that rise gets passed on to the consumers, which are you. So whether or not you realize it or not, you think that, oh, let's raise the taxes on the rich. Ultimately, you're the one that's going to pay for it. I promise you, you're going to be taxed in one way or another. You're just not aware of it. So make sure you join the Patreon. A link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Align yourself with a group of people that can give you game and insight. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Would you like some of my water? I'm good. I'm okay. Thank you. Align yourself with a group of people that can give you some gain. And then you can start to beat the rate of inflation and start to make some adjustments. And that way you're not the one that's spending the most money to support a regime. I'm sorry, not regime. To support your legislative branches that are all millionaires and they think are and are benefiting just like me. Okay, okay, pumpkin. All right, cool. Rita, <laughs> any more thoughts on uh, inflation and things like that before we continue to move on? It's gonna be a great show. I got a lot of quick hits today. All right, let's go. All right, so let's go. Before we get to the quick hits, uh, Al says groceries are higher, but your crack pipe is free. Ah, shout out to Biden <laughs> for free crack pipes. <laughs> that sounds so crazy. Emmanuel says, That sounds crazy. Welcome back, Rita. You was missed yesterday. Don't be acting hey, like hey, she was missed like that. Hey, hey, y'all. What's going on, Emmanuel? Don't be acting like she was missed like that. We ain't you said about you it. missed me too. We ain't worried about it. Don't you, They shouldn't be missing you like that. Mm, you getting a little jelly? There was a trade. Are you getting a little jelly? There was a trade. What was the trade? 
in the NBA. This is just a real quick hit. Oh, I thought because you said I, I did an article previously on uh, Ben Simmons and how he was losing out on the bag. I mean, he was effectively, if I'm not mistaken, his contract is somewhere around 30 to 32 million, 34 million dollars a year, right? But he wasn't getting paid half because of the vax. He was getting paid nothing because oh, he man. had opted to uh, create an environment where he didn't really want to play for the team that he wanted to play for. And so he stuck to his guns. Well, he was traded, and it was a blockbuster trade. So we seen James Harden this year, and uh, he was very, very lazy, and he came out with a smoothie. Sure did. Yep, he I came out with a smoothie. That game. You remember that? You remember that game? I do remember that game. <laughs> yes, I do. He came out with a smoothie. He didn't even dress for the game. Uh, I don't know. He just walks lazy. Still the, one of the greatest scores in the game. But it was a blockbuster trade yesterday. So um, it's not the trade that I'm really interested in because we're going to wind up covering this on Lapeef Sports probably on Sunday or something like that, right? So it's not the trade that I'm really interested in. Let me tell you – well, let me break down the trade really quickly. And this is, a, again, just a quick hit. Let me just break this down really quickly, and then we can get into the meat and potatoes of what it is that I'm interested in. Um, Philadelphia 76ers, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry. I thought that it was a good trade. I thought that me personally, I think that uh, Brooklyn absolutely got the best out of this trade, neither here nor there. Emmanuel says, Anton, you missed like three of my super chats yesterday. Hmm. I didn't. That's why I brought you up on the panel and I dropped the link on you. You was like, yo, what's the link? What's the, I remember fam. I ain't miss you. I ain't miss you. Shout out to Emmanuel, my guy, supporting the platform, right? Brooklyn Nets, Philadelphia 76ers, blockbuster deal. Uh, trade with James Harden, Paul Millsap going to Philadelphia, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, and Andre Drummond. And two first-round picks is going to Brooklyn. Um, Brooklyn will see, receive an unprotected 2022 first-round pick, blah, 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 $2 million in cash. We get it. Um, so we get all of that right we get all of that again this is a couple of different things i'm only interested in the money right here harden has exercised his 47.4 million dollar player option for next year next year he's going to make 40 this is just from the nba this ain't got nothing to do with no other deals next year he's going to make 47.4 million dollars for the 2022-23 season wow that's insane to me. Is it too late for me to learn how to play basketball? Oh, my God. Check it out. And he's eligible to sign a four-year, $223 million extension with Philadelphia in August. And this dude is out here pouting and asking for trades and all of this other type of stuff. $47 million this year. He's eligible to sign a four-year, which basically is an average of... 50 over 55 million dollars a year for the next four years after that this is crazy that and is this is what we pay for when we go to these games when we spend an 80 and 120 thousand dollars a year for season tickets we got to pay what? for these guys well not the piston salaries but neither here nor there so that's the big thing right that's the biggest thing that i wanted to gain out of this because again we're gonna break this down on lapeef sports AL says, uh, did you check out that Homeland Security rules on Miss Mall disinformation? They planning on making it an act to spread a misinformation. I'm doing research. You know I got to do my research before I bring it up. Stacey Rubin says, Anton, I don't know how you do it. One of the hardest working men on YouTube, and you definitely lucked out. Rita is simply amazing. Aww. Amazing. Thank I you. do it really well because I got a dope person that's next to me. Absolutely pushing. So this is the thing that I want to make sure that I would get out of this. And I think that Stephen A. Smith was absolutely right. Stephen A. Smith had a take, and he said the owners are coming for them. Players are slacking on a job while taking advantage of the collective bargaining agreement. Now, the thing that I want to emphasize here is that there's always people that mess it up for the whole bunch. They're going to make all of their money, and they're going to mess it up for the whole bunch. Everybody should be getting the bag. Everybody should be getting paid. The NBA, in my opinion, is getting fleeced because the players have too much power. Mm -hmm. And Stephen A. Smith came out with a hot take yesterday that I thought was absolutely accurate. Um, he said, we all know, well, this is the sentiment of the, of the thing, right? 
Ryan Windhorst, Stephen A. Smith, and Kendrick Perkins appeared on first take to discuss the matter before Thursday's James Harden and Ben Simmons trade. Right? Trades were discussed. Windhorst suggested that the Lakers need to move, need to make a move to get out and be reinvigorated. Magic Johnson says that he was sick of the Lakers, sick of the Lakers after the loss to Portland Trailblazers. Um, Stephen A. Smith took the controversial took the conversation off its original course and alluded to the upcoming bargaining agreement. So the bargaining agreement, largely, babe, is the negotiation between what the salary cap is going to be, what players make, what concessions that the owners make, what concessions that the players make, depending on how well the league is doing, and what the results are of the last collective bargaining agreement. So it's kind of like a union, but for the NBA players to ensure that they get their just due, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the key. Here's the key. And then we're going to get to the next quick hit. Uh, Stephen A. Smith says the Los Angeles Lakers are an unmitigated disaster. They are a mess. They are going to cost people their livelihoods. And in the midst of all of that, players who are getting paid don't deserve to get paid. I agree. Um, but they'll get their money anyway. And that's why the next round of collective bargaining negotiation between the owners and players is going to be must-see TV in terms of us talking about it uh, because these owners are coming for them. He said the fact that you have guys taking time off, the fact that you have guys who don't want to follow the rules and regulations. We be seeing people. Hold on. Let me let me pull this out real quick. Um, tell your, text your daughter, please, and tell her to turn her music down. Um, we, be, we see people all the time, Rita. And these players, they walk out. They be eating sandwiches. <laughs> they be just casually strolling through. They be having a good time. Yeah, and they yeah. are making an insane amount of money. And then we'll run into Victim Olympics and blame everybody else when we don't go about doing things the right way. But let me go ahead and finish this up and then we can get it popping. Um, the fact that you have guys that don't want to follow the rules and regulations, you got guys who are being lackadaisical at their discretion, picking when they want to play. Sometimes these people come to games and they be not even playing. Mm -hmm. They don't even play. Um... Instead of being committed to doing a job, the owners are coming from him and calling, and I'm calling it down the middle the way I see it. Some of these dudes, if they, if the players end up getting the short end of the stick, they would have deserved it because some of the shenanigans simply can't be tolerated and it's bad for the game. I agree. So based off of the amount, because you know what we pay for the game. You know what we paying for these games. Based off of what you see happening, do you feel like we get our money's worth? And I'm not even talking about the Pistons. I'm talking about from when we put, because they raise prices and stuff, mm -hmm. and it all comes out to a big number that we pay for season tickets. Do you think that we actually get our money's worth? Honestly, and this is just your personal opinion. Do you think we get our money's worth for what it is that we pay to go to these games? No. Why? Um, I don't, it just seems like that is a lot of money to play basketball. I understand it's for entertainment and they work hard and all of this kind of stuff, but the amount of money that they make and how, like the article said, like lackadaisical they are, it just doesn't add up to me. Would you feel like it was worth it to pay what it is that we pay for these games if they actually put in more effort? If they were more entertaining, if the if the stars that were supposed to come out for every game actually showed up, would you feel as though it would then be worth the price? Yes. Would you really? Uh, well, I mean, not worth the price, no, because I feel like it's still overpriced. But I mean, it would be a little more understandable if that makes sense. Let me see what y'all talking about. Real says, Uncle Joe bringing him back. I saw a crackhead in the wild like a rare Pokemon the other day. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen one since the 90s. What in the world? Yes, in the chat, yo. Y'all are crazy. I got to get to the poll because Natasha says the poll responses are, are too funny. Um, but again, I think that what it is that we're getting as a product from the NBA versus uh, what these guys are putting out it's not right. All right, I got one more uh, quick hit, and I think that you're going to really like this one. Really? Before we get to um, the Lapeef Let's Talk show from last night, and we start to break that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And again, I want to invite you guys onto the panel to have this discussion with me. Uh, once I start breaking this down, 
I am very, very interested in having people on this panel to have these conversations. We gonna get into it, right? But before we do so, so the big homie, Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. is all over the news, right? So let me break this down for you. So A, Snoop is going to be a part of the halftime show for the Super Bowl as a part of Dr. Dre and mm -hmm. all of that, right? Right, right, right. Eminem, Dr. That. Dre, all of the all of the legends, right? Shout out to Snoop. A. B, three things here. Well, four things. <laughs> B, smartly enough, Snoop is the marketing master. He dropped a new album today. Because mm. we know that them numbers are going to skyrocket as a result of him getting more visibility from the Super Bowl. Right, right, right. right. All great things. C, Snoop had a horrible contract back in the 90s like most rappers, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't making any money off of his music. Death Row Records, which he was signed to, that was owned by Suge Knight, wound up changing hands a bunch of times as a result of bankruptcy and losing it and all of that. He wound up buying the whole label back. He owns Death Row Records now. Snoop does. Yep. He bought Death Row Records. He bought the name. I'm not sure the, the details of the deal, but I know he's supposed to be acquiring more of the music and things like that. And so he dropped his new album on his own label, Death Row Records, which I think that that's awesome. It's full circle. Eventually he came back. He owned the thing that he helped start. Mm. D, you ready for this last one? Mm -hmm. All good news, right? right? Shout out to Uncle Snoop. D, Chick from 2013 came back to sue him for uh, trafficking and holding her against her will and sexual, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's break it down, ladies and gentlemen. So Snoop D.O. Double Jizzle. I'm going to go ahead and bring you in on this one, Rita. We got we to gotta put you in the scene for this one. Okay. Snoop D.O. Double Jizzle. Jizzle, Jizzle, Jizzle. All right. Let me pull this in. Bow. Snoop Dogg bought Death Row. So we're going to go into that first. Uh, rose to fame during the 90s. Death Row Records has acquired the label's brand from um, MNRK Music Group, which is controlled by private equity funds managed by the investment firm Blackstone. So Blackstone owns everything. Blackstone is one of the biggest investment firms ever. Uh, I guess this is just an arm from them. And he was able to acquire it, right? Terms of the transaction was not disclosed. However, a source close to the situation tells Variety that Snoop's acquisition of, of the Death Row brand is at f is the first part of a transaction that's expected to see him also acquiring some of the label's music rights. So he doesn't own all of the music rights, but he owns the name now and he owns some other parts, right? Um, <clears throat> his, home, his own and un unspecified other artists um, suspected to conclude in the coming weeks. So he getting to the bag, he making moves, he investing, he buying assets. News come just before Snoop appears with Dr. Dre, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. Mary J. Blige also smartly dropped the album today mm. <laughs> called Hello Gorgeous or something like that. I forgot. You can check I it out on check it Music, out. right? Halftime show was foreshadowed earlier this week by the announcement he and Nas are teaming up for a new song called Back on Death Row. Shout out to Freaky Jason and the Bell Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Releasing a new album today. Cool. Um, it goes into the to the label and all of that. Um, nothing major to see here, right? So we know that Snoop is buying Death Row Records. Everything is dope. Everything is good so far. Now, let's get into the thick of things. So a former Snoop Dogg backup dancer sues him for alleged um, for alleged sex trafficking and sexual assault. Right after that. What are your initial thoughts before we start to dive into this, honey? Seems a little fishy. Because why does she wait until right when he bought the label? First of all, it was in 2013, right? Well, we're going to dive into it. We're going to dive into it, okay. right? He being sued by a former backup dancer who alleges she was the victim of sex trafficking and assault by the rapper and one of his associates. According to the lawsuit, I'm always curious. Hold on, hold on. Before we dive into this, I'm always curious why it's always a lawsuit. Right. Why like, how it come lawsuit? it's never like, because, I mean, I don't know. 
Like I said, I've never been in that situation, so I don't know what it's like. But I would want the person to go to jail for what they did. Like, I wouldn't be trying to get no money out of them. It would check be it a out. criminal. Check it out. We're going to dive case. into it. And then we're going to get into the people. Let's talk. According to the lawsuit, private mediation, so they went to negotiate. She wanted to negotiate and get to that bag. Was attempted Tuesday and Wednesday morning. The plaintiff's attorney uh, filed suit in federal court in L.A. immediately after the talks failed. So when they couldn't get their money, they filed suit in court. All right. Mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg's attorney and publicist didn't respond Thursday to a request for comment. He, this is what he posted. Hold on, let me post it on. This is what he put on on Instagram. Gold digger, gold digger season is here. Be careful, nephews. Keep your guard up and keep your circle small. That's what he put on on, <laughs> on the gram. He said gold digger season is here. Um, the incidents allegedly occurred in 2013. So any woman can say anything. They can just show up in 2022, nine, nine years, years, nine years later, and say, "Yo." They did this to me. So this is what he what they said happened. The incidents in question allegedly occurred in 2013 to a woman identified as Jane Doe, who worked for and performed with Snoop. The other rap and other rappers. You remember what uh, Don Magic Wand, the Bishop Don Wand, he used to carry around his pimp cup all the time. He used mm -hmm. to hang with Snoop all the time. Okay, so check it oh, out. Oh, was that him? Well, that's Didn't him he used to no, have long hair and stuff? I don't know. He used to have a hat on all the oh, time. Oh, I thought he had like braids or something. I don't know. Um, and several of Snoop's companies is also named in a lawsuit. So check it out. According to the lawsuit, in May 2013, the woman and a friend attended a Snoop Dogg show at Club Heat Ultra Lounge in Anaheim, California. All right? Okay. I'm going to break down it all. Um, they entered the VIP room at the club and ran into Campbell. Stop me when you have something to say. Okay. Campbell is Bishop Don Juan. Okay. Okay. Who later, uh, who later allegedly later invited them back to the rapper's studio. So they said, come on back to the studio, baby girl. What did you think was going to happen, girl? The friend left. Yeah, because she already knew what was up. She wasn't interested in that. The friend left, right? Smart girl. It says the friend left around midnight. And Campbell allegedly offered to take the other chick home or I can take you back to my place with me. The girl says she asked to go home. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. Comment as you see fit, ma'am. <laughs> she fell asleep in the car. She says she fell asleep in the car, the lawsuit says, and awoke shortly before arriving at his home, not her own. Okay? Okay. She was exhausted. And fell asleep at his place. She didn't say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Hold on one second. Uh, <laughs> so when you woke up and realized <laughs> that you were not at home, that's when you say, hey, guys, can you take me home? If the answer is no, then you get this out all cap, of the car this and you use cap. your $1,000 Apple phone that you have in your hand. I'm sure you have one. Well, this is 2013. To, they have iPhone. Shout out to right? i9 time for the super chat. I appreciate your family. And get an Uber or call a taxi or call a friend or somebody, but you didn't have to go inside of his house. Mm. I'm mm -hmm. sick of it. Let's continue. All right. So we're there. We're there right now. All right. Fell asleep at his place, only to be awakened at 4 a.m., the lawsuit alleges, by Campbell forcing his cock into her face and into her <laughs> mouth. <laughs> he forced it. He said, open up this door and let me go ahead and insert. Open up the door. Let me in. <laughs> he forced his peen peen in her face and into her mouth. You know what somebody going to tell me the other day? What? Cause you know I like to say cock. They mm -hmm. said Anton, only white boys and white people say cock. Really? That's what they said. They said Anton, only white boys say cock. Mm. They told me they say uh, black men say penis or dick, and white boys say cock. Hmm. Anyways, he forced his cock <laughs> into the building. All right. So let's continue. 
Stop me when you're ready for me to uh for me to go in. All right. Continue. When you want to make some comments. This is your this is your part of the show. This is your part of the show. Why? <laughs> Campbell later urged Doe. So this is all his homeboy. This ain't got nothing to Snoop, nothing to do with Snoop right now, okay. right? And then afterwards, I guess he got done, and he said uh, to put this dress on and come with him to the taping of the Snoop Dogg D O Double G News Network. So it showed that new Snoop did. So she put the dress on, and then she went with him after that, even after she's got done doing what she do, right? Okay. Um. So I'm so <laughs> just just real quick. So in the process, if he forced it in your face uh-huh. and it's in your mouth at this point and it, you don't want it there, that's why you have teeth. Uh-uh. Don't you do it. That's what I would have did don't if you... I wasn't interested. Rita, first of all, ain't nobody made her open up her mouth. I mean, I'm just, but I'm just saying. Don't you if... do that. Don't you do that. Get, get, you about to get punched. Why? Punch. Punch. If you don't, if, if I don't want this there, then that's what's going to happen. Um, he allegedly told her he wanted to see if the rapper would make her the weather girl and Doe says in a lawsuit that she complied in hopes of advancing her career okay so then why are you coming back now with the problem then because you didn't become a weather girl because you didn't get the job you wanted look at them supporting you this is why you don't need to be on the show <laughs> Listen, if you in a situation that you can't get out of, then you got to do Who what you got to do. Get out of I'm that. saying she said that she Cap. didn't want it Cap. there. So Cap. um, at the studio, Doe went to the bathroom with a stomach ache. So she had already uh, probably because she swallowed. But we don't know. She went to the bathroom with a stomach ache and only to have Brodus, which is Snoop. Mm-hmm. DTE Renewables. What? Cap. Um, only to have Snoop open the bathroom door while, while she was on the toilet, then enter and shut the door behind him. The suit says he allegedly removed his cock from his pants and said, put it in your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Look, afraid for her safety and her life. Hmm. Like Snoop Evan did anything to anybody. Afraid for her safety and her life. She complied. The suit says Hmm. afterwards. Doe was spotted by by the pimp, Magic Don Juan, wandering around in the studio. He called her over to take a picture with the rapper, and then she took uh then so she took the picture, mm-hmm. then took her out of the studio. Uh she claims in a lawsuit that she wasn't hired afterwards. She was looking to get the bag mm-hmm. because she didn't willingly and enthusiastically give him oral. Okay. She also alleges she has suffered from various ailments since the event, including anxiety, post-traumatic stress, depression, nightmares, sleep disorders, headaches, emotional distress, and more. Nope. Do you believe her? No. You don't believe her a little bit? No. Okay. You're the woman on the panel. You said no. Nope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean into you. The lawsuit seeks damages and an amount to be decided at a jury trial. Wednesday was a big day for the rapper. Well, that went into how he purchased Death Row and all of this other, so on and so forth. So right when he got a little bit of good news, right when he got his good news, Mm -hmm. a bad news bear showed up and said, nah, Snoop, get over here. Uh, Stacey Rubin says, don't bite the pickle, Rita. No, (laughs) Rita is out of control. So final thoughts on, uh, Jane Doe accusing accusing Snoop suing him and his companies for their Mm-mm. 2013 melee. No, that's not no. No, because you did that. You willingly would you have did that, went girl. along with it. You did that girl. You hung out with them afterwards, took pictures and all of that stuff. You were not that traumatized. If you were, then you would have went home immediately after. Just my two cents. <sighs> Even Azriel says she don't believe her, and Azriel be holding these chicks down. <laughs> Look, Azriel says. So the focus was she was mad she didn't get the job after all that. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. It was like, okay, girl, thank you. All right. So this is what we gonna do. All right. This mm-hmm. is what we gonna do now. Let's do it. You know we got a recap part to the show. 
from last I night. I always have thoughts, mm-hmm. right? Um, and join a live stream on my other channel. Uh, link is in the description. Join a live stream on my other channel tonight. Late night live streaming. We're going to be getting it in. We're going to be having conversations. Y'all know it go off the rail. It's going to be absolutely lit. So the whole world is going to have those comments. But um, I do want to start to recap a little bit of what happens yesterday. Again, let me first acknowledge all of the bag chasers. Shout out to my Patreon members. If you are not a part of the bag chasers, make sure you join the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. We do want a Patreon exclusive meetup in Atlanta. Atlanta. Dates, details, more to come, all dropped in the Patreon. We getting it in. All right. So shout out to the bag chasers. Lapeef, let's talk last night. I thought it was a fun show. Mm-hmm. It was a switch up from the usual. But, but I do have some thoughts and some things that I want to have a conversation about that okay. I think that the ladies specifically tonight, because the last time the guys was off, had my boy Logic jump on, and I'm going to drop the link in the, in the chat in a minute. Um, because I'm interested in getting you guys thoughts. I am going to be limited in the amount of people I can have up on the panel. And I don't want to have a whole lot of talk because, you know, we're going to do the breakdown from a group perspective tonight, tonight on a late night live stream. All right. So, but, but I do want to have conversations about what went on last night. And before I drop the link in the description, right. Let me go ahead and say that, again, I think that the fellas was on point and the ladies was kind of, they was okay. They did all right last night. But I think it's important for us to uh, break down and emphasize why it's important that women stay up under real men. I think that women are insane to want to be out here operating on their own and moving in a way that's not conducive for their lifestyle. And so let me just say, let me move over a little bit. Let me say that um, I am going to include you in this. Okay. So let me go ahead and put you over there. And then we're going to break down the video. Let me close out this news. Let me see what y'all said in the chat first. Let me see what y'all said in the chat. I need to know what you guys said as far as the poll. Because Natasha <laughs> said the poll was crazy. Let me see what y'all talking about. Um... I said, are women finding happiness is over 450 votes. Are women finding happiness and fulfillment without a husband? 18% said, yes, women are winning in 2022. 18% is less than one fifth. 82% says, nah, they lonely and tired. Mm. They got this, the rest in B face out, mm. in this, out in this mug. Thank I you need, guys for taking the I poll. I appreciate online. y'all. So. Now that we have that sentiment, what are your thoughts, Rita, before we really start getting into it? Are the majority of women, single women, finding happiness by themselves? Um, Ladies had a Westbrook turnover game. (laughs) So I think that happiness is condition. I mean, you know, it. It, it depends on the person and what your definition of happiness is. So I think that they could possibly be happy in the things that they are doing, but they're probably not at their happiest, if that makes sense. Like they would be happier if they were with a man, if that makes Or, you know, had a good man behind them that supports them and all of that kind of stuff, if that makes sense. All right. So let's get into it then a little bit. Let's break it down. All right. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. And then let's go ahead. Let's just jump over to 22 minutes. 22 minutes and 8 seconds. You know, JR got to do his uh his thing. His commercial. Yeah, 22 minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll rewind that a little bit. 22. And again, I'm about to drop the link in the description in a minute. All right? So. All right. Okay. What about you, Kay? What you thinking? Kay is about to answer a question with regard to are men natural providers and protectors? Okay. Are men natural providers and protectors? Kay is about to answer this question. We are about to get her her reaction. 
And I, I, you know, it's only 22 minutes into the show. So it's just really starting. Okay. We got the Teach commercial, we had the countdown timer, all of that. All right. So let's continue. Our men naturally protect us and provide us. Um, I think it's really like what we consider protection and provision, I guess, um, is very much socialized. So I think a lot of that has to do with how people are socialized and the things that they're exposed to. Um, Ma'am, can you please give me some context on whether that was a yes or no? <laughs> I'm just I'm just curious. Was that a yes or no? Did no, I miss it something? It wasn't a yes or no. So are you telling me that the context was added without an actual, actual answer? Okay. Because I just wanted to make sure that as I reviewed this that I didn't miss anything. Why are women so difficult? Why are women so difficult? Why y'all can't just... Let's do this. Why know, can't you guys just difficult. answer the question? And it, why is it so hard to answer the question? Oh my God, it's so painful. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I am not built for that life. I couldn't do it. I'm not doing it. It makes no sense to me. But all right, let's continue. Joseph says, um, age makes them less happy. I see managed 20 year olds and unhappy 40 year olds. Mm, that's because life didn't kick their A's for a long time. Mm -hmm. All right. So oh, Jesus, let me go ahead and get back. Thank you for the super chats too, my friend. Let's continue. What? <laughs> I didn't know what the piss that was. I was so confused. Like some people think, laughing. you know, I don't know, certain what things about laughing? protection and what providing. Reaction. Watch this, and watch this. it just. Hey, what you thinking? A man naturally protects us and provides. Watch Courtney's reaction. Um, I think it's really like what we consider protection and provision. I guess um, is very much socialized. So I think a lot of that has to do with how people are socialized and the things that they're exposed to. Look at Q laughing. What? Look at Courtney. Like Did some I people think, you know, <laughs> I don't know, Courtney certain things about laugh. protection and providing. And Courtney it just depends what your society or whatever. Like men have been socialized to do certain things. What is protection to you? And in, in um, the current environment that you live in. See how nice I'm trying to be, Rita? Current environment, like, what do you mean? Like, in my home? Or <laughs> are you talking about just what? in what is general during about? this time period? In your culture, life? in your environment, in a general sense, what does provision and protection look like to you? Um, Generally, I think protection looks like um, not, you know, disparaging a person in a public type of way um it can look like physically protecting someone that could be in danger um it could look like helping someone you know get or maintain certain skills that are going to be helpful for them um it could be certain types of knowledge that you can get it, it almost feel like she running for office i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> like i don't even know what those at the end of the day me listening to it right now i don't know what she said can you break that down for me can you translate? Um, she was just saying, I guess, that it could be in a physical form. It could be in a knowledge form. It's different types of protection, I guess, is the no, basis no, no, no. of what First she's part, getting at. Are men natural providers and protectors? Oh, no, I don't know what that means when she says socialized. I don't understand that. All those can be forms of protection. Um, and then providing, you know, could be anything that you're provided with. So, so. Do, do you think that guys instinctively, like without even being socialized, just like, let's just take little boys, right? Our little boy. Do you think that guys instinctively are providers and protectors? Just naturally? I think so. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't think that it's something that is socialized, you think it's more or less. Okay, what does that mean? When y'all say means socialized, like, what does that mean? That's the expectations from society at large, that guys are supposed to take women and all this other type of junk, but it's not instinctively who we are. It's um, like we talk to, but we not necessarily, that's not who we are by default. No, 
I would think that it's because, I mean, just like me growing up with my cousins and stuff and them being boys, like, they always would protect me from things that, you know, and it wasn't, I mean, it was little kids, so I don't think that they was taught that. I think that was just the thing. Like, they was a boy, I was a girl. It's like, okay, we got to protect her at all costs. Like, I don't Mm. think that it was taught. Interesting. He's naturally more protective over little girls or just in a general sense? Um, no, I wouldn't. In my observation, I would not say that that's the case um, for children. So she's saying that instinctively little boys are don't just want to protect girls. She said they don't? She said she wouldn't say that that's the case. No. Okay. That boys are just naturally protecting girls. No, I think it's definitely a socialized thing, in my observation. It's too early. You know, I, I don't, I'm my JR voice. It's too early. I, I can't, I can't. He said K is being disingenuous. I really can't, Rita. I am not built for this. I am not built for these conversations to this extent. I don't believe that, um, you know, I asked before, I said, do you think that you're a feminist? And she said, no. I don't believe that she is truly, um, I think that she's a feminist. Based off of how she answers, I think that she's a feminist. I could see that. I just do. Real says, uh, men by design uh, from God are natural protectors and providers. We are bigger and stronger for that very reason. I agree. That is what we are built for. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move along. Let's move. That's the beginning. Right. We're going to move along to an hour and 58 minutes in. All right. An hour and 58 minutes in. Where we at? All right. All right. Let's go hour 58. So I tried to make it all so this in this part of the conversation right now we're talking about and i'm gonna try to take myself out of it because my thoughts is gonna really really be given tonight <laughs> and i'm about to drop the link in the chat and and i'm dropping a link in the chat for anybody that want to have a thought or two we're talking about kim kardashian and leaving um kanye west okay and another lady that had an article and the idea behind this conversation, shout out to Freaky Jason. He says, uh, I agree with Kay. It's socialized and not inherent. Interesting. The The idea behind this conversation is that Kim, Kim Kardashian is saying, I needed to do me. I needed to find me. I needed to figure me out. Mm-hmm. But the problem with the argument is that, in my opinion, is disingenuous in that instance also because she ain't by herself. She with the Pete Davidson dude. Mm. So how does that make sense? She ain't been by herself. Anyways. Yeah, I had a conversation with somebody about her. What'd you think about her? What'd you say? Um, I feel like, and this is just my personality, um, and of course nobody knows the details, the ins and outs of what they was going through. But it's clear that Kanye needs some type of help, you know, like mental help or whatever. And I just feel like as a wife, that is when you are supposed to be there the most. So you're saying that when a dude start going through something, that's when you hunker down harder with him. Exactly. That's not you when you run away. should never walk away. No. Like her little career. I mean, I'm not going to say little career. Cause, but I mean, like, hey, you got to put that to the side. I might not be able to film today because my husband need me. You know, um, I can't be in L.A. I need to fly to wherever he at and be with him. And see what's going on. Like, you can't just leave them to his own devices because I'm sure when they got together, she knew that something that something was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't imagine that he just started acting that way. I'm sure it was some signs there, you know. Yeah, it's always been yay. So. Right, that's what I'm saying. Mr. Logic says, Rita, uh, Anton Daniels, Rita, have your cuz hit my jack. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Logic. Link is in the description for anybody that want to cam up and want to jump in on this too. Just to let y'all know, I am allowing y'all to come up today. Um, 
Sir Shy says, uh, Dear Kim K, Kanye is the last train leaving done. People are going to stick around with her because she, you yeah, know, she brings she, visibility. She AL says, That was a Billy, Billy Madison level answer. Everyone is now dumber after listening to that. She gets no points. And may God bless her soul. I am. Sometimes I'll be wondering, um, like, Anton, you got the not, patience of a saint. There aren't as many <laughs> negative um, thoughts about single women these days as maybe there used to be, like, in the 1950s or something like that. Um, and there's a lot more, there are a lot more opportunities for women. So I think that a lot of women do find um, more happiness and fulfillment. Uh, but that's not to like downplay like women that do find happiness and fulfillment in a marriage. Um, I think that a lot of people get married, like the the story you just kind of showed on the screen. A lot of people get married to check off a box like, oh, I'm getting older or, oh, you know, whatever. That's what we're supposed to do or whatever um, and get married for the wrong reasons and then end up realizing like they're in a situation that they don't like. Hence. So basically, long story short, when we get done with all of the words, Alec, the question was, is women finding happiness and fulfillment without a husband? Right. No. Are women finding more happiness and fulfillment without a husband? I don't think so. You don't think so. Mm -mm. Tell me why. Because I just feel like life is so much better and more enjoyable when you have somebody to do it and enjoy it with. Not saying that you can't be happy if you're not married, but I just feel like it's not more happiness. J. Ben, and I'm about to pull Marcus up. Uh, J. Ben says, uh, and thank you for the super chat. Boys are naturally off instinct, inclined to protect girls. As they graduate through life uh, towards being a man, a filter slowly goes up, and then it becomes a battle of protect the ones worth protecting. That is true. The socialized and the learned behavior is you start to become more aware of what's what women want for protection and how you, you know, how you get to hurt yourself and all of that other type of stuff. And I think that that starts to play a larger role in what's going on. Let me get up uh, Marcus and I'm going to bring up Vern. Let's do that. And then I'm going to bring oh, up Vern. Marcus. What's up friends and gentlemen. Yeah, what's, what's going, going on? on? Chilling. chilling, chilling. What are y'all thoughts on this? Um, uh, I think that whether it's inherently or whether it's a, uh, whether it's socially, it doesn't make a difference. I feel like as a woman, you would want a man to be a protector, regardless of how they how they became one. Like, it doesn't make a difference. Like, if you out and about and you with your man or you in public and you're being harassed or you're in a sense of danger, I think that a man should want to step up and help you if you need help. And it don't mean I got to say, I got to put my life on the line for you. But like, let's say you, you 65 and you struggling to carry your grocery bags. I'm going to help you with that. So like I'm gonna protect you from having to worry about going that extra mile or whatever the case may be. And to your second point, I think that long term, over time, like life is about relationships. So like as we get older and people start forming relationships with other people, um, you kind of like miss out on that. So I think it's important to have those relationships. Like I don't think you need to be married to be happy, but you definitely want somebody you can do life with. What are your thoughts, Vern? Uh, first and foremost, K got to stop answering like she a politician, bro. Oh she my answers, <laughs> she she answers like she's holding political office, and it's very vague, and it's all about a perspective that she's trying to place on a conversation instead of just answering the question for up front. It, a simple yes or no can suffice. Don't tell, don't talk about what societal views are on protecting and providing because we all get a we all got a basic gist of it. And I agree with homeboy. It doesn't matter if it's inherent or if it's by choice. It's still an expectation, no matter what we, no matter which way we come from it. You know, whether we were taught by our parents and family members to protect women at all times, or whether we just chose it from the bottom of our hearts. Like I really like this girl. I really care about this woman, and I want to make sure nothing befalls her. Regardless, it's an expectation that come from women that we should that we're supposed to protect and provide. So what's the big thing like we know the basis we hear it every day that we get on the show we hear it in the kevin samuels chats women want bills paid women want to be provided for women want to be protected so what's the what's this spin that's always trying to be put on what's providing and protecting 
because when it's not when we're not talking about it that's the first thing that's thrown out providing and protecting men need to provide and protect now we're talking about okay we're providing and protecting whether inherent or not you follow and it's like well what's providing and protecting that's moving the goalposts it's disingenuous i don't like it what what's going on jacqueline can you hear us, Lil? You look like you uh stuck in the matrix a little bit. I can't hear you, love. That glitch. <clears throat> Here, I'ma let her uh get her stuff fixed and then I'm gonna bring her back up. Stacy Rubin says, with all due respect, uh we're allowed to say anything about single mothers, and if you do get canceled, they tried canceling the godfather KS, Kevin Samuels. Yeah, they they try, but all of that's gone. We're not having that no more. And then J.B. Quentin Quentin says, K speaks in run-on sentences and add unnecessary variables to feel intellectually superior. I don't even think that that shows any kind of intellectual uh, superiority Superiority at all. I think it's, I just think it's weird. But let me play a little bit more of this. Very high divorce rates. Um, So I, yeah. There are definitely women that are out here like, you know what, like some of them don't even want to be married. I mean, that's not that's not my philosophy for my own life, but I definitely know that there are women out here who are finding happiness without um, a I think husband. that's cap. I don't really I don't believe that there are women out here that are that are obj- that are saying I don't want to be married. I think that that's cap in every way, shape or form. I don't believe that that's happening at all. Let me get Marcus back up here. I don't think that that's happening at all. It, 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 it's confusing because you get on one hand, you'll get K stating things like that. Like, oh, there are women out here that don't want to get married. But then when you get on social media, when you have these conversations with people online, most of the time, and Kevin Samuels proved it, proved it with that same basic four set of questions. Do you want to be married? Do you want to have children? It, and they fall, it, it, it falls every single time. Yes, I want to be married. Yes, I want to have children. No, I don't want to pay most of the bills. Like, it, that man has been online for two years almost, and you have not seen any woman pass those four same set of questions. It's always, yes, I want to be married. Yes, I want to have kids. So what what is Kay saying right here? Saying that there are some women, an exception to the rule, like, are we? Why are we worried about the minority of the situation and trying to use them as the majority to defend a conversation? Like, again, going back to the disingenuousness of it all. Like, you can't you can't say that these five women over here don't want to be married and they're happy, and then we got ninety five other women saying that they want to be happy, and you're like, oh well, these five women matter too. And it's like, yes, I'm not saying that they don't. They should go get married. Whatever they, whatever rock they vote, but stop making them the standard when they're not. That's the big issue. We got to stop trying to get all of these little niches to be overly represented in conversations just because you know one person exists. That's great. Congratulations. I really appreciate you finding that one needle in a haystack. <laughs> but it's still a haystack, bro. I'm not. I don't care about that needle like that. What's going on, uh, Christian? Can you hear us? You got you muted. You sound like you look like you muted, fam. What's up? Are you? you can you hear me? I, I can hear you now. What's happening? What up, yo? What's what up, though? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think the issue that what what a lot of so women deal with this, but I think people in general. But we'll just follow me here. But we'll stick to the women concept. You have this thing of the concept of provision and protection, whether it's your children, whether it's your spouse whether it's someone on the job, whatever it is, you have this thing of people want to be able to have autonomy to do what they want to do. But then they have to balance that against there's someone um, that they are ult- that's ultimately kind of responsible for their well-being, who's hired, who, who they have to, in some ways, um, you don't, I don't want to use, that they have to give some reverence to that they may know more, they may see more, and that's a struggle for some people. And I think for what, because of some of the um, ideologies out there, I think what a lot of women are struggling with is 
they want to be they want to have a man in their life to provide and protect but then they have to give up some of their autonomy and so they have the, there's this there's this tug of war they go they go through of what do you mean that, by give up their autonomy yeah, what do they have to give up they're giving up some autonomy. So anyone to be in a relationship, whether you're a man or a woman, you give up some autonomy. So I'm married. Anton, you're married. You just can't do what you want. You have to consider your wife. You oh, consider- yes, I do. Okay. Well, you, you, you have to consider everyone's feelings and whatever, what's ever going on. And you're going to make the best decision considering everyone's situation involved. Yeah. I'm going to make and the I- best decision for everybody, but I don't, we're not limited. In here, okay. You you understand? We're, but I get we're, what you're saying. I understand what yeah. you're saying. Okay, so that's how mature people. That's how adults go through decision making processes. And I think for a lot of women, particularly someone such as um, Kay, the struggle is they want to have um, a provider and protector, but then they have this other thought in their head: I have to give up my autonomy, and I where I just can't do what I want. So it's something as simple as why, you know, you tell your daughter, you, you put locks on your doors, right? Because you tell your daughter not to go outside. Well, she could still open the door. I mean, but the thing is, you to, you've set the guideline. I put locks on the doors. I told you not to go outside. And therefore, I can protect you while you're in the house. What happens is, I think a lot of women or people in general, they struggle with when people put in guidelines to protect them or provide them a, a way to operate, they want to go color outside or go outside those guidelines because they ultimately want to do what they want to do. And they maybe don't know or don't realize it or maybe just don't even care what's on the other side of that line. What, what are your thoughts analogy. on this, Rita? Do you think that um, based off of what he just said about um, people instinctively just want to go outside of that line, Women specifically, what do you think that that is an accurate statement? Like women just want to be doing what they want to do, but they still want the provision and protection to go along with it. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, because I feel like if you're in the right relationship and y'all have the right communication and all of that stuff, you can still do what you want to do and still be under the proper protection. Because I mean, I don't have any limits. As far as like what I can do, I can go come as I please, but I still have Anton, you know, protecting me and his covering over me, if that makes sense. Let me get to the super chat. Black Kings of the North says, um, topics, question, should women and men go back to being shamed for not getting married at a later at a later age um, for the sake of their own benefit? What do you think about that? What do y'all think about that on the panel? Let me say that again. Um, should women and men go back to being shamed for not getting married at a later age? For not being married, I'm assuming that he's saying. For not being yeah. married at a at a later age for the sake of their own benefit. What do y'all think about that? Um, I don't think they should be shamed, but Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there should be a, a matter of shame, um, because people can make choices as long as they're comfortable with the bed they they sleeping in then, you know, you can't shame anybody if they made that choice. I mean, you can, but it's not going to make or break a person. Right. It all depends on what the person wants. You know what I mean? But I think also, to your point, Anton, I think for men, um, you often reference, reference this where you say, like, as a man, you need to be who you need to be in order for, like, the woman that you're trying to get with to follow you. Cause yeah, you are what dude. you attract. Yeah, if you're not that dude, she's not going to be that woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's just how it is a lot of times. But I do not think uh, people need to be shamed for not being married. I think a lot of times women push underachieving dudes, hoping that they become something greater than they are. I think Facts. a lot of times women, you know, instinctively try to it's make a, a dude or change a dude to be better. Yeah. Um, it's a, I, I really think that's a, it, I, won't, I don't want to say it's a control thing. It's that that build up mentality. Like I, I get a man. I, I'm, I'm in a better position than him. I can help build him up. Uh, a lot of early 2000 music pushed that, that whole sentiment. Like, hey, you know, if you see me down and out, you're not supposed to be criticizing. You're supposed to be helping. You're supposed to be my helpmate. And it's like, yeah, that's. Mm-mm. Well, it depends. If that. you come in through the door needing help, yeah, you're not. That, that's, <laughs> that's a problem. problem. Yeah. 
I, I got a um I got a good family friend. She just recently got divorced, and I never liked her husband when I met him. I'm like, he a broke bum. Like everything he say, everything he do is broke. It, it, it screams broke. Like I'm 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 out here surviving. I ain't even thinking about thriving. And that marriage lasted all the six years. She lost twenty pounds, and he lost his shit. He like, oh, so why you losing weight? She started. She was always making more money than him. It took one job loss. One job, not a career, just one job loss, and everything went left. Now, mm-hmm. homeboy done tore up pictures and all this other stuff. And the first question, what kind of pictures? Asked, what is he a female? <laughs> he he old old pictures. Yeah, no, he, he he pulled he he went he went full female. That's why his name uh, he got a female pictures. name. What? No. Yeah, he tore he took the the marriage pictures, bro. He tore up all of the marriage pictures. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a little emotional. Julius Jermaine okay. says, "Love y'all. Can't wait to meet y'all in Houston." Told my fiance proposing tomorrow. I would try to get a pick with me, you, her, and Rita. That shouldn't be a problem. We're not going to Houston. Congratulations. Yeah, we are. We going. Uh, oh, for the Lapeef thing. Yeah, for okay. on April twenty yeah, right, third, right, right, right. the Lapeef Network thing. So that'd be dope. All right, Congrats let me play a little bit more really quickly, and then we gonna get some sentiments. Let me play a little bit more of this. I'm going to move over to, let's see, let's just move up. I'm thinking about Atlanta. Yeah, you all in Atlanta. <laughs> Rita don't know where she going. She, she don't. She <laughs> <laughs> like, like more than like 50 or something. No, that's more than what I'm seeing. Nobody said nothing about 1950. No, I'm saying that's what I was like. answering. And maybe that's where our miscommunication was. <laughs> I was saying like more now in 2022 versus the past. I mean, but I wasn't there in 1950, so I can't even answer that question. I mean, I don't know. My, my, the, either, the, so I mean, answer your question. I do not think that people are more fulfilled than they were yesteryear. Than the 1940s, the 1950s. I think that, again, people just have more. We, we got more devices. We got more distractions. Mm-hmm. We got more social media. We got a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. yep. that keep us busy. But it doesn't doesn't the music. Really, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't translate into fulfillment. And I think that fulfillment is different it's, than being busy. You can be busy all you want, but I don't think that that necessarily translates into, into into being fulfilled and happy at all. So let me go ahead and get y'all sentiment on this. I'm uh I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna do too much more. Something for tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get too much more into it. Let me add y'all back up here. Yeah, Rita, read. Um, let's get Rita, read to the left real quick. Well, we, we'll set that up. But what's y'all sentiment on that? Do y'all think that people are inherently more happy or happier, um, today or the same or less than they were yesteryear? If y'all had to guess. Nope. I think yesteryear people were probably a lot happier because they didn't have all of the distractions that we have now. Like they they didn't have any social media to compare their lives to somebody else's. You know, they actually had to um, talk to each other because it was no cell phones and all of that kind of stuff. So it was more like interactions. It was more family time. You know, you actually sat down and had dinner with your family. You know, it wasn't like everybody was on their phones or distracted by something. So I personally think people was happier then. Uh, Aliquandria says, shout out to my bro, Vernon Scott, for conveying my thoughts. I love this topic. Anton and Rita are the blueprint to successful marriage. Um, so let me ask a question. Let me, let me pivot. Christian, what do you, th- what is it like being married in a general sense? Do you think that it's difficult being married? Is it a lot of work? What's your sentiment towards marriage in, in, in a general sense? To me being married. Well, so I've been almost married 10 years. So, and I've been with my wife. Congratulations too, by the way. Oh, appreciate it. Um, we've been together almost, uh, almost 16. So, um, you know, basically majority took of took you a long life. time to get married, my friend. Well, you know, I, you know, we met it when I was in college, and I had to get a job. And once I got a job, I had to save up for a ring. And you know, I I, I went through the process, you know, and I did. You know, that's how we did it. So that's how it happened. Okay. So Go ahead. so anyway, for me, I say being married is it's easy in the regard of. I know what uh, my spouse needs in terms of uh, what what her personal needs are. Now, the thing is, 
I can say that I spent a lot of time, especially early in our marriage or even preparing for getting married, of mapping out what I would have to lay out in order to be married and be a father. So that way I could get through sections of life. So basically what I do for me, being married is very, fairly easy because I planned this out and I, and I bucketed time frames in our lives and marriage to, I need to do certain things or have certain things accounted for going into it. So right now, you know, I'm 38, I'm thinking about what do I, what does life look like at 44 and what does my wife need to be, what, what does my wife need to be doing, what the kids need to be doing. I'm mapping all that out now uh, to get to that point. So basically starting at 40, what the next four years look like. That's what I'm kind of going through right now. Um, mm-hmm. But being married, I feel is a pretty, it, it has its benefits because the biggest thing is if you have the right spouse, whether you're the man or the woman, you have someone in your corner who truly has your best interest at heart because their your interest is actually their interest. And that's what the security of marriage really provides because you, you're you in the boat together. So if the boat has a hole in it, you're both going to sink. And uh, people forget what I think that's what this, that's what marriage truly provides, whether it's whatever it might be, you're both are dealing with the same thing and you're both have this real best interest to make sure you both succeed. When, when one person decides not to paddle the boat or to get out the boat, that's when things get real, get real weird. And that's when people have problems. Hmm. Uh, it's, uh, your guy says she ran into destruction cause she didn't listen to instruction. Bishop Don magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> Marks. What what is your Marks. what are your thoughts, uh, Marcus and Vern, on this? Um, uh, I think that um, I was at a brain fart. I think that um, people back in the day had more values. Um, because you I think mean, so? I'm not married, but I, I don't I think, think so. I think they had more values. I don't think that they had more values. Think about bro. my grandparents. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think about my grandparents. I think about how they like how they stayed together and how like my family did things. And what that what that produced for my mom and my dad when they got together and how they did things until my dad passed away, and I saw my grandma stay by my dad's my grand uh, my grandfather's side till he passed away. My mom stayed by my dad's side till he passed away, and like that's what I got exposed to growing up. So I think I cherish that value because I was showing that value. I think nowadays a lot of times people grow up in broken families, and that's not an excuse. But like when you get when you when you get your exposure from social media. And everything is all glitzy and glammy. That's what you start leaning towards. That's why you get these superficial, like projections of like what love and relationships and marriage is all about. And then that's why I mean, for me, like in my age group, that's why a lot of times you see people like in their early to late twenties have like this misconception of what it's all about, and they kind of go off fallacies and not values. I don't know, man. What What are you thinking, Vern? Uh. And then I want to, I just want to kind of get everybody's final thoughts because I want to save some for tonight. Uh, So the biggest thing for me is, is one, I can't say that people of yesteryear had higher moral values because they didn't have social media. So whatever they was doing in the dark, low key stayed in the dark. Yep. But the thing, the thing about it is, is that there were, there were a lot less distractions. One of the biggest things that I've, I've learned recently um, is a saying that I heard from some old dude on Facebook. The biggest thing he said is calm down and live your life. Back in those days, people were a lot calmer. They lived their life. They wasn't caught up in a lot of stuff. They wasn't caught up in celebrity gossip. They wasn't always giving a, their opinion on stuff. So they were focused on different things. They were more focused on outcomes than feelings back then. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, you can feel some type of way, but what's the outcome going to be? Are these bills going to be paid? Are these kids going to be taken care of? Are these lights going to be on? Or am I going to sit up here and give you, write, read you the riot rights about how I feel about something that I think you may or may have not done without solidified proof or solidified proof or whatever? It, we're very emotion-based these days. Even my parents tell me this. Like, even when we come to our jobs now, we, we prioritize our happiness over our outcomes and our jobs. We prioritize our happiness for everything. And happiness is a fleeting thing where everything should really be about the outcome. You gonna, It's going to be some uncomfortable days and there's going to be some stuff you got to do or deal with that you don't like. 
nowadays we are egotistical and we feel like, oh, because I exist, I shouldn't have to deal with this. Because the world and society is this way. I shouldn't have to deal with this or I can just be on my own. And it's like, well, you can't 100% survive on your own also. So what's the compromise and what's the trade? We just don't compromise and trade as much these days. We're all adamant on our, our standings of some feelings that probably change in like a year. Long story short. Brita, you got any final thoughts? Mm-mm. You guys got any final? Well, let me get this uh, super chat really quickly. Uh, Jacqueline says, as a single woman, I am happy. But because I do know that life is better with the right relationships. As it relates to this topic, having men be a part of my life makes me better. Shout out to Jackie. Jacqueline, any final thoughts, gentlemen? Uh don't leave me hanging at a game like that no more, man. <laughs> man, listen, I had to do the Lapeef, the Lapeef Network uh, last night, so I couldn't beat it. I actually had gave those tickets away to in December mm-hmm. uh, to go see John Morant to the Patreon member, so that was absolutely oh, yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I, yep, I, I, I saw some away. other people in your seats because I ran into Mateen Cleaves. Yep. He worked where I work. Yep. And I was like, this would have been a good little nice powwow. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Oh, but yep. next time, next time for sure. Yep, I had um, I had uh, wind up giving those went to my Patreon member. So, yep, shout Much out to my to the tribe. Patreon chat. Shout out to the gang. Shout out to the <laughs> gang, gang. Shout out to the tribe. We actually sent the sent to the sent the people in my seats. So that was absolutely dope. Listen, I appreciate. I love everybody. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Um, tonight we getting it in. We are gonna do late night live streaming. It's gonna be popping. And we're gonna we gonna make it work. Oh, Anton, before you go, uh John from the barbershop says what up. Tell him I said what up though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell him I said what up. All right, my friends, I'm gonna talk to y'all later. Later. All right, so another awesome live stream if you ask me. I concur. Um everything is good, everything is dope, everything is great. Any final thoughts before we uh, continue to rock out today? <clears throat> nope. Thank you guys for being here on yet another fantastic Friday. And we will see you all tonight on the other channel. All right. But I need y'all to do me one more thing before we go. Let me fix this really quickly. Make sure you tell your family and friends. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. No fumbling on a Friday. Um, we going to get it popping tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern. We making it happen. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all tomorrow. Back chasers. Peace.